This is 7 National News and in our top story. The UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, has expressed his deepest thoughts and prayers with the victims of the terror attack at a shopping centre in the Kenyan capital of Nairobi, which has so far killed 68 people and wounded 175. That's according to the latest reports. In his cable of condolence to the Kenyan President, Uhuru Kenyatta, his Highness Sheikh Khalifa expressed the solidarity of the government and the people of the UAE with the Republic of Kenya and their support for any measures it will take to face this cowardly criminal act. The UAE Vice President and Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and His Highness General Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander, of the UAE Armed Forces also sent their condolences to the Kenyan president. In his capacity as the ruler of Dubai, the UAE vice president and prime minister, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum has issued a decree appointing Essa Abdul Fattah Kazim as the new governor of the Dubai International Financial Center. Kazim will be succeeding Abdullah Mohammed Saleh who will continue to serve as a member of the DIFC Board of Directors. And the decree is effective as of the 1st of January 2014. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed praised the dedication and efficiency of Abdullah Saleh in serving his country throughout his tenure as DIFC Governor. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed also highlighted his professional role in supporting the banking sector in the UAE for over five decades. The second phase of the Harriet Watt University campus in Dubai was opened by Lord Green, the UK Minister of State for Trade and Investment on Sunday. This is the first time that the Education is Great Britain campaign has been seen in the region, a UK government programme that promotes UK education overseas. The new 100 million dirham development is based over in Academic City, where Lord Green was welcomed and given a tour of the new facility. He revealed that the UAE and the UK share an excellent business relationship and that there was a 9% rise in UK exports to the UAE so far this year. He added that on top of the trade and tangible goods, both sides are partners in education, which is critical to the future of both economies. We're extending our great campaign, which celebrates Great Britain and the services that it can bring uh, around the Emirates uh, over the next few months. Um, we've started in Dubai, and here we are this evening um, at the Harriet Watt campus, where we have just opened phase two of the campus. There are three and a half thousand students here, uh, and that's a great sign of the importance, I think, and the opportunity of the link between Dubai and Britain in educational services. The UK has a great educational proposition. Uh, the UAE in general, and Dubai in particular, is a hub for educational services throughout the whole of this region and is a leader in many ways uh, at the world level uh, in the provision of international education. So Dubai brings together students from all around the world doing all sorts of subjects here in a campus run by a British university to quality standards which will be just the same here as back in Britain. It's a great offering. The Harriet Watt University structure features on-campus student accommodation for both men and women, a 700-seater auditorium, leisure facilities, as well as a coffee house, shops, and even a beauty salon. In fact, we were the first British university to open in Dubai International Academic City, and we started with just 120 students back in 2005, and we now have over 3,500. Essentially, we've doubled the number of students almost every year since we've been in, D in Dubai International Academic City. So it's been a great success story. And this new development here will allow us to grow to over 4,000. We have well over 20 uh, undergraduate and postgraduate programs. We're now moving into our PhD program, and we ex expect to increase the number of programs we offer in business, in engineering, in science, in languages, in fashion, and, and we'll continue to grow. The energy station in Jebel Ali will start operating on the Dubai Metro's red line from September the 30th, as announced by the Road and Transport Authority. 
The station is expected to serve around 2,500 people daily and is located between Danube and even Batuta stations in the Jebel Ali industrial area. Mohammed Youssef Al Mutareb, the director of rail operation at the RTA's rail agency, was quoted as saying that the station will give additional access to thousands of people. He further added that commercial outlets at the station will also be up for grabs. Additionally, the RTA has made some changes to cope with an increase in passengers. The peak hours on the red line will start at 6.30 a.m. instead of 7 a.m. during weekdays. On the green line, the morning peak hours will be from 7 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. with a headway of six minutes and the evening peak hours from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. with a six-minute headway. Over 15,000 dangerous products have been removed from the shelves over in the capital since July 2012. That's according to the Abu Dhabi Quality and Conformity Council. According to a local daily, the results come as the Abu Dhabi Quality and Conformity Council has launched the first interactive product recall and incident reporting system for the region where consumers can take pictures of faulty products and then report them to the council. The website and campaign is under the name of Manar, which is Arabic for to prevent, as a part of a new consumer rights campaign and is available in both Arabic and English. As soon as a complaint is filed online, ADQCC will buy several samples of the reported product from the shop in question and also other shops. All of these products are then tested in a lab and then if found faulty, they are withdrawn and the buyer will get his or her money back or have the product replaced. And finally, looking to other news, Do is celebrating 1,438 volunteer hours that were dedicated to its Iftar Ramadan Tables initiative during the Holy Month this year. And the telecom operator held a special ceremony for the 328 volunteers who participated. In total, the volunteers from both ThinkUp GCC and Do devoted 1,438 hours to distributing 130,000 meals to those less fortunate in four different locations across the UAE. The sustainability efforts this year were extended to recycling, where three tonnes of paper waste was also collected from various meal distribution locations. The volunteers also participated in Do's Iftar, where 25 children from the Dubai Thalassemia Centre joined Do staff for a fun-filled evening. In total, the volunteers dedicated 959 more hours than in 2012, when 106 volunteers gave 479 hours to distributing Iftar meals.